Hey everyone, welcome to Watch It Paint It. In this video, I'm going to be looking at and reviewing, talking about, covering a new puzzle book, sort of adventure escape room style of book. Basically a puzzle book. I think these are becoming more common and people are much more familiar with that. If you're unfamiliar with the channel, this is one of my hobbies. This is not my first rodeo. I've played many escape room puzzle books, that sort of thing. So, you know, I've got some experience behind playing these now. Uh, I know what's good, I know what's nice, and we know what's bad, and I know which ones you should be playing. If you're like me, I find this isn't a huge hobby. There's not that many of them, but it's massively growing, and they are coming out a lot, lot more. I think Journal 29 was the first one, or the first very good one, which grabbed my attention and was very, very enjoyable to play. After that, there was only like one or two more, and now the market's getting a bit flooded, but there's still not so many. And at the end of the day, they're fairly cheap. I'll start off by saying that this is Mob Treasure. It is just launched on Kickstarter, so it's available now to back, and it's already funded. It funded within four hours, I think, some ridiculously fast amount of time. It's $15, and I will leave a link in the description below. I don't make any money out of that, although this was sent to me free. It is a review copy, not for resale, preview copy, and that's that little disclaimer I need to do. If you're unfamiliar with puzzle books, what you're normally doing is you're solving a sort of a logic puzzle. You're trying to work out what the page is. It, or pages or book like sometimes you have to go multiple pages back and forth sometimes I believe this one even says uh, you may need some outside research so it doesn't actually say what that is but you can imagine maybe you have to google something maybe you have to look it up that sort of thing they normally have a little explanation page of what you're looking for and what you're going to need so a little cover page exactly like this nearly every book I've played has explained it and then you, you're going to about your reading a little bit, understanding what you need to do, working out what you need to accomplish. And they're often an indication of what you're looking for. Sometimes it's a number, sometimes it's an English word. They nearly always tell you what you're looking for. This one in particular is showing you how many characters or digits this in this this book. So that's basically what you're doing in these puzzle books. Now, the reasons I enjoy them and, and I think they're a, a great hobby to have is, first of all, they're very, very light. This is basically all you need, although outside knowledge, you might need a laptop or something. It's nearly always something you can do via your phone. If they need an app, you can do it via your phone and you maybe need a pencil and a bit of paper but you know it's all stuff you could have anywhere in the world at any point or you could carry with you so I really like how portable it is I often find myself doing these a if I'm just on holiday instead of a reading book I might just take a puzzle book to solve while I'm laid on the beach <laughs> back in the day when you could go outside <laughs> Equally, when I was on a train, this I do a lot of train travel, so one of these books would be a great way of passing the three hours on the train. Again, not going outside at the minute, but those days will come back. So it's highly portable. Another reason I really like it is it, I, I, you can see I've done a third of this book and I've not actually filled in anything. I've not written on a single page. I've not damaged a single page. Uh, so you can re-gift them. Now you can't completely re-gift them. This doesn't look brand new anymore and I'm pretty careful with it, but it's going to take a bit of battering, but within my own family, you know, my wife will solve this after me. In fact, she's been playing it too. And then we might pass it on to some of the in-laws, that sort of thing. So it's just, it's not... It's not expensive to begin with. It's $15. That's, an, that's the third reason. These are not expensive to, to do, especially if you can use it for somebody else. If you can pass it along and get two or three people, you're talking $5 a person sort of thing. A lot, lot cheaper than anything else. If you compare that to an escape room, it's not the same experience, but it's a very similar. If you like the puzzles in an escape room, you'll like the puzzles in these puzzle books. Now, let's talk about this one in particular. So this is Mob Treasury. It's $15 on Kickstarter. It's just launched. I'll leave a, a link in the description below. And it's very, very similar to many of the other good books that I've done so far. So a couple of things to point out. The, let's start with the bad. I guess we'll cover the bad. So as I mentioned, this was a preview copy and there were mistakes in here. Some of the puzzles were... I could still work out what the answer were, was even though they were wrong and some of them were just pretty easy to get it wrong and there's typos left right and center which led to quite a negative experience in the in the preview in the play testing it, it, i'm sure you can imagine if you're trying to solve a puzzle and it's unsolvable because of a mistake then it's going to leave a sour taste in your mouth now having said that i spoke to jan who is the creator of the game and he's taken everything i've said on board and he's making all the corrections so i i am honestly very confident that everything i've spotted will be fixed and i won't be the only person play testing this so i 
don't think that will be a problem going forward. So it's just a little little moan that there are mistakes in here, but I, I honestly believe they will be fixed. The other bad bit is it's one that doesn't have an app. The way you solve this is the hints and solutions are in the back of the book. I will not show any of them. Now, hints I've never even used. I've never used in any book because if I can't solve it without the hints, I don't want to solve it. And nothing's ever stopped me yet, including this book. I've solved everything with zero hints. And that's not saying it's easy and it's some, some puzzles take me a long time, but I just don't want to use hints. I don't see the point. I've paid for this. I want to have the full experience. But the solutions being in the back and the fact they are digit numbers or, or most of them are there's no way of knowing that you've got it right without checking the back of the book and at that point you've seen the answer so it's not like you guess let's say 20 for this probably 20 you go and check and you see it's not 20 game over right like you've seen it now you can work out you can go back and like work out how you should get the correct number that's fine you still get to have some closure on working out the puzzle i, I don't to, to me I, I i really dislike that aspect and this is not the only book that does that anything without an app is very very similar to that at least the ones where you're guessing an english word if you haven't got an english word you know you're incorrect until you get at least an english word this one being just numbers how can you know without checking what it is at the end now like i said it's not all numbers you can you can sort of see this isn't going to be numbers so it's not every time but a lot of them are, I can't remember how many, but enough of them are numbers that you can't be certain. Whenever you have to look in the back of the book to see what it is, I feel like you're, you, you're setting yourself up for a bad time. If you get them wrong, or if you like to guess like I do, if I've got an app, I am way faster at just guessing the answer and just seeing if my first instinct was right or wrong. Anyway, that is my second issue with this this book. And um, and really the only real one, because the preview issue is not going to be a problem for you guys. I think the third and final issue, and this again will probably not be a problem for for, uh, this is going to be on me personally. So, so this book, it goes through chapters and the chapters to me personally just vary. For, they go easy, ridiculously hard, medium, ridiculously hard, easy. They're up and down and up and down. And it seems like the whole chapter's like that, not like one puzzle in the chapter's hard. And then later, the next puzzle's easy. It's just like, whoa, all of these are really fun and difficult. And then the next chapter's, whoa, all of these are ridiculously easy. And it doesn't really matter. There's always got to be easy and always got to be difficult puzzles and everyone's brain works differently. So some you'll find easy where others won't. And it's just how humans work. But this is the only book I've noticed that. And it might be because it's the only book that I've noticed that's got chapters. And it just seemed like the chapters could be in an order to build up. But again, we're all different. And I mean, I'm just trying to find some negatives to say to some extent. So it feels like it's a weighted review and you can pick what you think. If, if that would bother you, it bothers you. Let's talk about the good things though, because there are plenty of, oh, 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 oh. Just turning back to the back page. I remember something I don't like that the, the book cover. Is that weird? Does anyone, like, I don't know if this will change by the final version, but compared to like this Codex and Nick, Martin's like not particularly exciting. I don't know if this won't be in black and white when it's finished, but I, I just prefer this. I don't know. And Journal 629, again, it's so simple, but I just like the cover more. 404, again, fancy, fancy coding, uh, fancy, fancy cover. And then you've got, I don't even know how you say this. And, and I don't know. Non, none of them are super exciting, are they? But I just feel like something about this one is. It's the least exciting cover, and if you care about how they look on your shelves, well, you probably see it from this side, does it matter? I don't know, it was just, just something. So let's talk about the good things. I'm gonna say, I think, where is, oh, I don't have Journal 29, I have Journal 29 2, Journal 29 Revelation. But Journal 29 is what I would say is the gold standard of these books. It was it might be a bit nostalgic because it was the first one I ever played, but I think it plays incredibly well and I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. I think to this day it is one of the best that I've played. This might rival it. Dun, dun, dun. I just found the puzzles very enjoyable. Now, as I mentioned with the bad points, there's some that are just ridiculously easy. Whole chapters, in fact, that are ridiculously easy. But on a whole, a lot of the puzzles are some of the most interesting and fun. I actually actively really enjoyed solving them. And so did my wife. So my wife's played a whole bunch of these. We played about a third of the book. I should mention that too, given that there's only so much time in the world before these kickstart and I need to say something about it. So I think the puzzles are good. They're, I've not seen them before. They're different enough to anything else I've seen, interesting enough to make me want to do them, and fun that I think some some of them I've done and thought, whoa, that was a very, very 
cool puzzle and some of the chapters I, yeah this one in particular this this is a whole chapter so a whole bunch of linked puzzles and they're just very very good very different and very enjoyable and I, I enjoyed this entire chapter probably the collection is the best thing I've solved in any of the puzzle books so far so high high praise some of the best puzzles I've ever, ever done so very very impressive there the second thing that's very unique to this book or unique enough is the fact it's a story so I have played some story based puzzle books in the past and <sighs> When I did Journal of 29, the first thing, the negative thing I said about it was it doesn't have a story. And does that matter? And I didn't know. And I felt like it was lacking. Maybe you need a story, something to read as you go through, some, to give you more theme. And then I played some books with stories and they were so boring. It's like you've made a great puzzle book, but you don't know how to tell a story. So instead of enjoying a, a good story separately to a good puzzle, I'm reading an awful story and then delaying the story with puzzles that are quite hard and interesting to do. So I normally hate when they've got a story. This has a very small amount of story and it's it's just theme really. So far I've not, it's not, it's not, Lord of the Rings, you know, it's it's, it's not going to win any Oscars or <laughs> can't win Oscars. What do books win? It's not going to win any booksters, but it's it's good. It's 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 short. It's sweet. It's not a big story. It's nothing special, but it, it's tying it together and it's giving it a little bit more theme. And I find it quite interesting. They also lead to having chapters, and to some extent, that's just basically a. Where did that end? It's just a block of puzzles that are grouped together with a map that I don't know why that's there. That's weird, but maybe they come into it eventually once you've done more than 25 puzzles. But these are all just kind of grouped together. You've got like the feeling that they're all linked and have some meaning together. And then you solve that block before you continue. And then you go on to the next chapter. And then again, it's a little bit of fluff. Doesn't seem to matter that much, but these stories again are like blocked together. So it gives some, it's all tight. I don't want to spoil anything, but it's all like tied together enough and I just think it's a good idea. A little bit of story to give, to just add to the theme. I think that's all it's doing is certainly how far I've got. It's just adding to the theme and blocking together a group of puzzles, which gives you a little indication they might work together or are tied together in some way, shape or form. I think it's a good idea and it's, it's something I've not seen playing anything else yet. And I think it's a nice little touch. So another good point with this book is the sheer number of puzzles, 74. No, that's not right. 76, that is the puzzle number at the top. There's sort of 76 puzzles and that's about, probably about 10 more than I've come to expect on average. I think it's quite a high number of puzzles and also the book thickness is, I think it is the thickest one that I own and it could be because all the answers are in the back as well. So don't, don't get me wrong, but on average, I think this is a, a, a higher number of puzzles than most of the other puzzle books I've done. So... Before I summarise, let's just solve one puzzle just in case you've got no idea what you're doing. Maybe you've never played a book and you're watching this because I'm a painting channel and you would like to see what you're sort of doing. Now, this is a spoiler. I'm going to go through and solve this one, but I've actually recommended that this should just be an example and just explain to everyone how you solve it because the puzzle is that easy. It, it's, it's a, in my opinion, quite a boring puzzle. It, it didn't test me at all and there's no clever logic to it. It's just simply, do you know what a baker's dozen is or not? It's as simple as that. You know, every every page has a puzzle. Uh, sometimes you go back and forth, as I mentioned, but they, they set out something for you to do and you're, you're, you're trying to work out what to do. So in this example, you're probably in the kitchen area on the map and there's some there's a notice board with some pictures on and then a note that just says, I started with a baker's dozen, but two fell on the floor. How many did I have left to give and hand out through the door? Oh, it's a little rhyme. I didn't even notice when I first did this. But yeah, if you're familiar with a baker's dozen being... 13 and you've dropped two on the floor how many are left 11 and that that's it one one done so you, that's the first puzzle solved you then go into the second puzzle and try and work out what to do by what you're presented in front of you and uh, that's it and you just go through i won't so solve any more because the rest actually take some logic some solving some working it out etc there there are a lot more in depth than the first one that's why i just think it should be a tutorial to, to, to me it's so simple but i guess you might not know what a baker's dozen is and you might need some outside knowledge and at that point you might have to google but if you know what a baker's dozen is, then you, you, you're done instantly. So that's that's how to solve a book. So yeah, basically, the only negative is, yep, yeah, no app. And looking up the answers at the back sucks. But 
it's not the only book that has to do that. It's, it's a lot to do unless you've got an app. What what else do you do? So that's the only real negative. And then positives are more puzzles than most. Very very good puzzles. Some of the best that I've ever played actually. And, and it's fifteen dollars. Fifteen dollars. Ah, I keep looking. Oh, it's only the hints. You're only getting spoilers for the hints. Um, <laughs> but that's it, guys. If you've got any questions whatsoever, ask me in the comments below. I will be happy to try and answer them for you. But that that is mob treasure, and it's a good one. It's a good one. If you like puzzle books, if you've enjoyed any of the others, by all means, check out the other reviews on the channel for puzzle books and see which ones I like. Thank you all ever so much for watching. I'll see you again next week.